That's Amy Skye, great voice. Yes. And a magnificent song, which she also wrote. It's about her daughter, who was born the very same day as she was. What a lovely story. And she and her husband, Mark Jordan, who is also a songwriter, will be here today talking about what it's like to be a singing, songwriting couple. When we come back, Amy Skye and Mark Jordan. Jesus, don't leave me alone. A little lamb without Is it, when you were making it, I mean, you had this catalog of back material that you could choose mm -hmm. from. Was it difficult to choose the 11 or 12 songs you put on the album? Yes, it was. And I have many more that are going to go on the on subsequent CDs as well. Yeah. Now, I noticed, Mark, for your last album, you dusted off that old Rhythm of My Heart thing. Right. Yeah. That was the one that went to number one for Rod Stewart. That's right. But tell me the story. When you wrote that song, you didn't know it was going to go to Rod Stewart. You, said, you certainly didn't know it was going to go to number I, I one. I never write for four people. I mean, there's some songwriters I can write specifically for an artist. Uh, you know, they, they, it's almost a, they sit down and write for that person. I, I can't really do that. I have to write for myself. So I, I, I think I, I wrote Rhythm of My Heart in 82 or 83, and it was for myself, but I didn't have a record deal at the time. So it just went into the big dark pile. And uh, um, the head of Warner Chapel uh, remembered the song in uh, in uh, England when Rod was looking for a, a new single. So where in the process do you come in? Does somebody call you up and say, good news, Rod's going to do your single? That's, and then, that's, what ha that's really? exactly what happened. And did you, did you know it was going to be the single from the album? No. I didn't know. I, I knew he was going to record it, and then you, you never know how it's going to turn out. And so I was happy that it was going to be on the album. And then when it was the single, it was just amazing. Well, what's it like for you when you watch <laughs> that thing climb the charts? I mean, are you just sitting there saying, go baby, go baby? And Yeah, it's, it's like a big snowball, you know, rolling downhill. You just think, you know, when's it going to stop? And yeah. it just keeps going and it becomes like the lottery. You know? I don't think people know that, that, you know, if you write a number one single and you have no debts, whatever, you know, you could probably live off the earnings for the rest of your life. Wow. <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> but it's not like it's not like Amy spends. But, uh, <laughs> I know, but I mean, it really is. I mean, it's a matter of actually striking. You really hit the jackpot, then. Don't it, it, I, I mean, it, I, there there are very few number one songs. If you really look at how many number one songs there have been since since the sort of dawn of of uh, the rock and roll age, there's only been, you know, about f 500. Mm. And uh, it's 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 quite a quite a thing when it happens. Yeah, well, congratulations, and then you do a wonderful job in your album too. Very distinct, very distinctive, Thanks. different from Rod's, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, when when you know, do you write songs for sp specific people or? I'm I'm, a... I'm like Mark. I generally, when I'm inspired to write a song, it's because it's something I would want to sing. Um, I do also uh, work well when an artist calls me specifically to sit with them in a room and write something with them for mm. them. Mm -hmm. I'm able to do that, but. Um, generally, I prefer just to, to do it as if it was for myself. I know Bob Dylan said that he was always really proud that Elvis covered one of his songs. Mm -hmm. And uh, is, is there somebody that you would really like to write for at this point? Linda Ronstadt. Really? I would, I've, she's a huge uh, influence on me. I would love it if she recorded one of my songs. So, Linda, if you're listening. Well, how's your Spanish? Not bad. I have a song in, on my record, actually, That's right. in Spanish, you do. of course. Yeah. You do. Um, on, on your record, you have a song called Colorado. Yeah. Now, that was written, actually, about coming home to... To Canada. To Toronto, yeah. right? Yeah. But, but you, you, you replaced Toronto with Colorado. Why was well, that? Well, the truth is, sometimes when you write songs, you don't really know what it is you're writing about or what motivates you to write it until after you finish the song and said, now, what, what is happening in my life that would cause me to write this? And um, uh, I wrote the, the first inspiration was the melody. La da dee da. Try to find a word to fit that and sort of started singing Colorado. And uh, the story came out about someone returning to Colorado. And as I finished it, I realized I was really writing about myself and my return to, to Canada. Yeah. But Toronto is one syllable short, so... Well, that's it. I couldn't, I couldn't replace it. Oh, Toronto! <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> but, Mark, on, on your record, actually, the song that we just heard a little bit from on, uh, with, with the video was also written about a, a Canadian story. And yeah. it's, a, it's an extremely emotional story. Yeah, it was about the, um, the kids uh, um, in the 40s... Uh, that were uh, abused in the in the Catholic orphanages in in Quebec and uh, the Maritimes. In fact, it happened all over the world, mm. as I, I found out later. And I um, I read the story in the Globe one day, and and uh, it was uh, so touching. And I guess probably because I, I was a new father, and uh, it just really touched my heart. And the, the song kind of wrote itself. Mm. Has being a father and you know being a family influenced your decision to return to Canada? Big time. That was the the reason. Really? Yeah. yeah. What was it? What's what's wrong with Los Angeles as a place to bring up kids? 
Where do we start? <laughs> well, uh, should we tell our Alanis Morissette story? Oh, yeah. That's a good point. We, uh, w when we moved back here, we, we still have a house there because, of course, you can't sell a house in London. Hmm. But uh, uh, we lent uh, our place to Alanis when she was going down to write for this album. And uh, she was, uh, we, li we live in a very nice neighborhood or lived in a very nice neighborhood, but she was held up in our driveway at gunpoint at 11 oh. in the morning. So, oh, no. Uh, you know, L.A. is a bit unpredictable that way. Yeah. 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 And the very same driveway from which two years earlier we had looked out south and seen Hollywood Boulevard burning down and uh, during, yeah, the during the riots. During the riots. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we just thought, well, you know, it's a little bit too exciting, mm. you know. Mm. Now, you have a song about the birth of your daughter on your new album. Yes. She, she has the same birthday as you? She was born on my birthday, on my 30th birthday. Yeah. Wow. Now, that's very special. Yes. So what, what was it when you wrote that song? You must have wanted to put a lot into it that was personal. Well, you know, I think having your first child, especially born on your birthday, really, you learn a lot when you become a parent. And um, you really, I don't think, understand the full cycle of life until you, you give life to someone else. When they're born on your birthday, I think it's a, it's a giant metaphor for the passing, passing of the torch, mm. you know, in all respects, emotional, physical. What a great gift to her. I think Zoe will be able to listen to this album for years and she'll hear you singing about it. That's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's actually a great gift to me, too, because now I don't have to remember <laughs> anyone's <laughs> birthday. It's right there. First line in the song. Um, right. Now, you are, are here in Toronto play, playing in Blood Brothers with David Cassidy. And I understand, Amy, that when you auditioned for this, you got into a little bit of trouble because you let your Canadian passport lapse. Yes. What happened? Well, um, Helen Reddy was supposed to have done the, the role of Mrs. Johnson that I'm playing, and she. They found out on a Thursday that she was unavailable, and I got a call on a Friday to audition. Saturday, they told me they wanted me to fly to London. Looked at my passport. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you're out of date. I called everyone that I could think of, every friend, every member of parliament, immigration lawyer. I mean, I was just, I found out you cannot leave the country. Well, what did weekend. you do? How did you get the part? Uh, my lawyer, Peter Steinmetz, for whom I'm eternally grateful, said, go to the airport, take, your, take a letter of invitation to audition, take your pol portfolio, and beg, do whatever you can. <laughs> he said, dress conservatively, so I buttoned up. For the first time ever, I think I buttoned the top collar <laughs> button on my blouse. But then hours later, you nailed the part. You were auditioning. You were not auditioning. You were rehearsing. Right? I, I, I got on the plane on a Sunday night. Monday, I auditioned at noon, and by 2, they were measuring me for my costume. That's great. How long will we have to wait for a new Mark Jordan album? Uh, not long, about three weeks. Well, come back and talk to us then, okay? Thanks. Been a Mark pleasure. Jordan, Amy Skye, nice to meet you. Thank you.